Hey folks, Orlando Prepper coming at you again. During my live stream on Monday night, I shared a few tips for the new concealed carrier. With so many people being able to do that now, I thought it might help a few folks out. During that live stream, I got a request to do a video. Since then, I've received some emails requesting the same thing. So I thought, hey, let's do it. This is it. If you're new to carrying, maybe I'll be able to help you out. Hang on. Okay, let's get it going here. Like I said, for, you know, a lot of you, it's probably elementary stuff, things you learned a long time ago. But if this helps just one new concealed carrier, then it's worth the effort for me. Remember, every gun you pick up, every gun somebody hands you, check, make sure it's unloaded. If Alec Baldwin had learned that lesson instead of preaching gun control at you, if he'd have taken just one gun safety class, he wouldn't be indicted right now, and that woman would still be alive. That's how dangerous these guns are, folks. Get professional training. Okay, that way, that great responsibility you're about to strap on your hip, you'll know what to do with it. So let's go outside. I'll show you a couple of quick tips. We'll come back in, cover a couple of more things, and then I'll be out of your hair for the all right, we got everything rearranged here. Uh, I have to stand up to show you this. I was wanting to do it outside, but the wind's blowing so damn hard I can't. It's ridiculous. All the noise I was getting in my mic. So, all right, first thing is, if you're going to get a firearm, and of course you're going to be storing it at home, get you something to store it in, something safe, especially if you have children in the house. Okay, especially if you have children. Don't have to be this big. Let's get you a nice little lock box. One of those quick release kind if you can. And that, that will protect you at home. So, all right. Now, what I wanted to get to, uh, when I did the live stream the other night, I was explaining how the new carriers might want to carry their gun in the easiest access point. So, as a human, your arms naturally hang down by your side. If you look on the side of your pants, you got a seam right there. That's where your arms hang, okay? Right down by that seam. And you want that weapon initially right above that seam. Why? Because, like I said, that's natural. If you ever have to pull that weapon, see where my gun hand went? Pull that shirt up come straight up, it's a natural motion, and you're on target. Again, this firearm is empty. All right. But, as you can see with the, the loose shirt, I also told you, if you're going to carry a firearm, carry it on your body, and you're going to have to change the way you dress. You can't be all stylish and wearing tight clothes and all of that. So, you're going to have to wear loose clothes to conceal that weapon. But once you get used to it, train, you know, to, to pull it out from a different position, I like to slide my holster back. I wear my holster back like this. For me, it's easy because I've been training to do it for so long. It comes out real easy. So that's just me. But, all right, I'm going to ask you a question now. If you see this guy, coming out of a restaurant or pumping gas, are you going to pay attention to him? No, it's just a guy pumping gas. But, in your state, if you can open carry, and you see this guy pumping gas, what are you going to do? You're going to focus your attention on him. If you're armed, that's the last thing you want, is people focusing their attention on you. So, Keep that gun concealed, folks. Keep it covered up. Now, we know where this one is. But, would you think I have another one on me somewhere? I do. Right here. Small of my back. Holster inside my pants. I can pull a revolver easy. Don't recommend this with those uh, 
kind of firearms that have that Glock type safety on it where all you have to do is pull the trigger and it fires. Revolvers and guns with separate safeties only, okay? A separate safety right here. Most guns do have a safety on the side. Now, that's where I recommend you carry it. I recommend you not carry it in what they call an appendix carry which is where your gun is inside your pants right here you know it covers up so it conceals good but where's that gun pointing boom right at the old family jewels and I've, se I've seen numerous videos of guys shooting themselves trying to pull a gun out like that first thing is don't put your finger on that trigger until you're down range okay if you're pulling it out your finger should be right above the trigger, right beside the trigger guard. But, it, I actually saw a video with a guy carrying a Glock. He was loading a copy machine, loading paper into a copy machine in his office. Doing appendix carry. He squatted down, and when he did, boom! That gun fired, 9mm, hit him right in the femur on his left leg. He almost bled to death before help got there. So I'm going to say don't carry that gun anywhere that it's pointing at a part of your body. That's why I recommend it here. Point it right down beside my leg. It's not pointing at any part of me. So, like I said, seam of the pants, holster right above that. Once you get more proficient, slide that holster around. Get it more towards your back because it's actually hidden better under your shirt. It's that simple. Hang on, let me rearrange all of this and we'll cover a few more things and then I'll get out of your life for the day. Okay, as you can see, the old man cave set up for video production again, like it normally is. This is actually the third tape. You want to see something funny? Hang around to the end and check out what happened during the first two tapes. My assistant kind of screwed up, so you'll get to see that. Hopefully you'll enjoy it. But the first thing we're going to talk about here there's a different kinds of guns. It's simple. You got semi-automatic firearms like this one that you have to pull the slide back on to load it. And you have revolvers like this one. Like I said, I know a lot of this is pretty elementary to some of you folks. But this one right here, when you pull that trigger, it's going to rock and roll. Unless there was a you know, a malfunction at the factory where they made the ammunition, which is very, very, very unlikely. So, this one's easier. There's no safety to worry about on this weapon. Just pull the trigger. Now, most semi-automatic weapons have a safety on them somewhere, like this one. It's on the side, right there. Gun's not going to fire if that safety's not off. It's that simple. Safety's off. Pull the trigger. Bam. This is a Bursa. 380. This is one of the few guns you can buy under $400 that I would highly recommend. A lot of people don't like these. Just like I don't like the Glock. They just don't like them. Another safety feature on these, it won't fire if the magazine's not in the gun. It's not going to fire. But here's the main problem with these for the new carrier. There's so many, what there's, you know, several ways this gun will malfunction. It might not feed around right. And then your slide is stuck partially open. Once you fire it, it might not eject the, the empty casing completely. And it'll get stuck in the port. If that happens, you have to clear that gun. Uh, you have to get that, that brass out of the port. Then you have to reload your weapon. With a revolver, you never have that problem. But once you learn to use a semi-automatic proficiently, you're really better off, I think. So, you know, that's up to you. Once you've carried a few, like I said in my live stream on Monday night, if you're just going to run through a few weapons, you know, maybe 10 or 15 weapons before you find the one you think is best for you. It's up to you. This one right here, you need a lot more training with than with a revolver. So, like I said, that's totally up to you. I also mentioned that it's good to have a handgun. Like I said, this one's a 380. 
that is similar to the one you carry on your waist, but have it in 22 caliber to practice with. You can see these two firearms are just a mirror image of each other. This one's a 380. Box of practice ammo costs you, you know, 25 bucks. This one's a 22 caliber. Box of ammo costs you five dollars. World of difference there. But when you're practicing, you're coming up on target. You know, you're getting set on that weapon, coming up on target. It's exactly the same. So that's the good thing about having a smaller caliber practice weapon. 22 caliber. All right. Now, let's get into holsters. You got leather holsters. You got Kydex holsters. You got leather holsters with no strap. Leather holsters with a strap. Totally up to you. I like the ones without the strap because you can draw quicker. The Kydex is made when you put your gun in, you'll hear it snap into place. It's secured. It's a little bit tougher to pull a gun out, but it's designed that way. Leather holster. You get a good one. Good hard leather. Double stitched all the way around. It's going to hold that weapon just as well as this one. But it comes out a lot easier. The safety strap. Totally up to you. I would recommend that if you're new to carrying a firearm, you get a safety strap. Because it's so easy to just, when you grab that gun, this one's made for this bursa. So let me drop that in there. All right. When you pull that gun, that's not coming out. But when you pull that gun off your hip, you grab it and you just push that strap and it comes out. Recommend this for new carriers because it's a little more secure than a quick draw. Now, there are several kinds of holsters you can buy. You get the ones outside the belt like I carry. Or you can get them to go inside your belt. Uh, that's a good way to carry. I never liked it myself, so I just don't do it. Like I said, it's up to you. They have what they call belly bands. It's like a, a stretchy material that just goes all the way around your body. And it has a pocket on it. You can slip your gun down in and cover it up with your shirt. Or ankle holster. Don't recommend those. I really don't. Because if you're in an excitable situation, you try to reach down and pull that gun out your pants leg, you never know. You might lose your balance, fall on your ass, and the next thing you know, you're shot. Don't recommend those at all. You also got shoulder holsters. If you're going to wear one of those, you'll have to wear them under a jacket or under a loose fitting shirt that you would wear over like a t-shirt because the gun is normally right here under your arm your holster's right here you got to reach in your shirt and pull the gun out it's a good way to carry but i just never cared for them i've gone through all of these holsters in my life you might find one of them you love so it's not going to be an inexpensive process to find the right firearm and the right holster for you. You're going to go through several of those items before you get where you want to be, where you're comfortable. The one thing I have to preach to you here is practice, 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 and safety. When you get that firearm, take it to the range. Learn how to use it. Learn to get proficient with it. It's going to cost you a little money to do that. You know, 100 rounds maybe every month. If you can do it more than that, do it more than that. But you got to do it with consistency because you have to be able to handle that firearm safely. And speaking of safety, like I said earlier, guy shot himself with a Glock when he just bent down. Problem with a Glock that I have with a Glock, you might not. Glock's a great gun. But the Glock has a safety on the trigger right here it's like a little i guess you would say a little lever or a secondary trigger on the trigger and all you have to do is put a little pressure on that to be able to pull that trigger that gun will fire that's how that guy got hurt he bent over uh probably a wrinkle in his pants released that safety and it pulled the trigger now this is a gun similar to that this is springfield xd difference is it has a second safety on the grip right here it's called a grip safety you have to activate both of those safeties to fire that weapon 
most uh, semi-automatic weapons have a safety on the side. Just like this Smith & Wesson. Got the safety right here. You got to flip it up to turn it off. Flip it up to turn it off. Down it's on. It's that simple. Revolvers don't have those. Like I said, revolvers just pull the trigger and rock and roll. So think safety when you buy a firearm as well. The reason why you have to practice a lot with these is because not only are you trying to get on target, when you come up, you got to learn to flip that safety. Keep a good grip on that weapon. Stay on target. Hope this helps you out in some way. I truly do. Uh, there's no way to actually, you know, shut tell you how to shoot while I'm sitting here doing this. But, you know, basically it's just a good grip, get on target, pull the trigger, squeeze the trigger, I should say, not pull it. You don't jerk that trigger, you squeeze it slow. When that gun goes off, it should almost be a surprise to you until you get used to it. Then it becomes second nature. When you get to that point, you're doing very well. So, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to say stay strong, stay patriotic to our founding principles, and pray for the United States of America. Orlando Prepper is out. Every firearm in this video was unloaded before I started filming. I checked it twice. I checked it three times. Wanted to make sure. And Tucker's joined us. Big old baby boy.